Hello, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. And welcome to our second session of our Unity Qigong class. Hello, everyone. I'm Aries, and I will be your host for today's session. As usual, I'm going to brief you guys through the housekeeping rules. First thing, um, try to keep your mic on mute throughout the session. Second, um, we kindly uh, suggest you to switch on your camera so that our instructor will have a good look at your progress and we can do it together. All right, so yeah, as I say, today is our second session. So I just want to do a quick check, like who was here during the previous session on fifth? Yeah, so if this is your second session, type a two in the chat box. If this is your first session, type a one. All right, let me see. Okay, okay, we have, oh yeah, we have quite a number of returning participants. All right, really good. Okay, and welcome again. And for those um, who is a first timer here today, uh, welcome. And yeah, no worries because um, this session will be very easy to follow. It's beginner friendly, so no worries. All right, so let me introduce our Chico instructor for today's, um, it's Kat. All right, so let me do a short introduction about who is Kat. Kat is the co-founder of Cody Cat and also a meditation, qigong, and spiritual teacher, energy healer, and trainer, and also a feng shui master since 2010. All right, so are you guys ready? Okay, so without further ado, let's welcome Kat. All right, um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second session. All right, so while well, this is the second session and we are building up from the first session, I will also recap a little bit of the first session for everyone who, um, who is here for the first time. All right, so just a brief introduction about Unity Qigong that I'm about to share with you all. Okay, uh, first of all is, um, you all must be wondering what is the difference between Unity Qigong and other types of Qigong. Right, so um, I'm just going to share a little. Now, uh, Unity Qigong is not something that we learned from another teacher. Okay, Unity Qigong was something that we actually received during meditation. So um, if you heard our background, we are actually, we are also spiritual teachers, we are healers and um, we teach meditation, all right? So uh, we do a lot of meditation ourselves and uh, during all those meditations in 2016, Right, um, as we were doing more and more Qigong in our practices, this set of Unity Qigong came to us during meditation. So um, who is the us that I'm referring to is basically my wife and myself. So my wife is Cody and I'm Kat, all right? So together we know as Cody Kat. And um, um, so through, through what we received in meditation, we started practicing ourselves, right? My wife and I, Cody and I. We practice and we found that wow, you know, it's exceptional. Is uh, we were also practicing other types of qigong and uh, this qigong that we received through meditation, wow, it's just mind blowing, exceptional. And then we taught it to our disciples. Okay, we have disciples who learn energy healing, spiritual healing, um, energy reading, and all those in our uh, modality, energy healing modality called infinity healing. So. We shared it with our disciples and everyone found it very good. And eventually we taught this Unity Qigong in classes at uh, certain parks in KL. And uh, there was a, a fee associated with the classes. But now we are doing um, mostly online, right? And we started online during pandemic like everyone. And uh, because the economy is not doing very well, we're just offering everything on free or donation basis. So. If any one of you feel that you benefited, you would like to support our online activities, make a, can make a donation. Otherwise, it's also free right? for those who cannot afford it. No problem. So um, this Unity Qigong, the source uh, came from meditation. It was very good, very exceptional. And, um, and that is a, a major difference, right? It's, it didn't come from a so-called human source. Now, the next question, the next thing about uh, Unity Qigong is uh, what is the difference with classical Qigong? So I'm just going to give a very brief Great thing. In, uh, I want to share with you about the subtle energies in human bodies. All right, in humans, we have three types of subtle energies: life force, chi, and prana. And life force is something that anything that's alive has. Chi is the energy that was discovered by the Chinese people. 
okay, it's an energy that flows in our meridians, in our Tan Tians, the energy centers are called Tan Tians. And um, you have Prana. Prana is the subtle energy discovered by the Indians, right? And Prana is the energy that flows inside chakras. The energy centers are called chakras and the energy, um, energy pathways, the energy channels are called nadis. So these three types are different. They have different frequencies, different uh, properties. That's why they are different. But uh, for those of you uh, who are out there, you, you may have heard these terms. You might think it's the same. Right, just to share with you, they are actually not the same. Although if you are sensitive to energies, you might sense one or the other and you can't differentiate. But um, for us, we teach our students and disciples um, in, in Hinity Healing to differentiate these three. So when it comes to normal Qigong, right, normal Qigong will enhance life force and Qi. Okay, so will enhance life force and Qi. And these two, these two are the energies that are absolutely essential and important for physical health. All right, so uh, any type of Qigong, right, other than, because Qigong will have some movement, right, it's kind of like exercise, right, so Qigong doesn't just improve your health from a physical point of view through physical exercise. It also improves these subtle energies, which maybe some normal exercises don't do that much. Okay, now the thing about Unity Qigong is it, has an added benefit of also improving prana because normal qigong does not do much for your prana it does not do much for the energies that flows in your chakras and nadis but unity qigong does and it does even more than that and today we will find out more okay so uh one of the things that unity qigong does is it helps you remove negative energies from your body so a lot of people will feel sensations um I bet most of you from the first session who are coming back for the second session, you felt a lot of energy sensations and it normally develops very fast for Unity Qigong compared to um, normal other types of Qigong. Okay, so um, Unity Qigong helps us remove negative energies and also brings in positive energies into the body. What kind of positive energies? We will review it in today's class. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go through the same basics that we went through in session one, okay, but we're going to do it very fast. All right, hello, Minwei. Now, the first thing is uh, how to feel your chi, okay? So I'm going to invite all those, uh, everyone here to stand up, especially the newcomers. Okay, if you are, if you don't want to stand up, or no, um, if this is the second session, you don't want to stand up, it's up to you. Now, um, if you help switch on your video, I might be able to spot something. Okay, if you don't, it's also fine, it's up to you. Now, the first thing in Qigong is how to feel your Qi. Now, I'm going to go through some very basic things to know about improving your Qi and your subtle energies in the body. The first thing is, whenever you are doing uh, Qigong and you're standing, the first thing is you do not, okay, do not lock your knees. Do you know what I mean by locking knees? You know, people lock their knees when they stand up straight and they make the legs go straight all the way so that they are kind of stable, right? Now, that is no good. Um, most teachers, uh, most good teachers in yoga, in Qigong, right, in martial arts, they will tell you locking your knees will only cause more damage to your knees if you need to move it, all right? So if anyone you have knee problems, bear in mind, try not to lock your knees. So if you're standing straight, right, just bend your knees slightly, all right? You don't need to do a horse stance and go down all the way, okay? No need. Just bend your knees slightly so that you do not stress your knees. And from the Qigong perspective, when your knees are slightly bent, you connect with the energies of earth much better, all right? You connect with energies of earth much better. Now, the other thing for <clears throat> people who want to practice Qigong or Tai Chi, or meditation anything that results in energy flowing in your body you need to remember this you need your tongue all right your tongue to touch the upper palate when you're doing qigong tai chi or meditation especially when you do it over a long period of time all right so what do i mean by that close your mouth observe the top of your tongue does it touch the roof of your mouth it's supposed to touch okay for the majority of people it will touch for a minority of people 
the tongue flops down. If it flops down, you need to make a conscious effort to put your tongue up. All right. Um, Christine is asking, does it matter if you're standing barefooted or wear shoes? Now is um, so when you are doing qigong, it's always better to do it barefooted and if possible in a place where there is more nature. All right, then the energies will be better. Otherwise, <clears throat> you know, if you if you need to wear shoes because the place is you know, you know, you know, it's a cement pavement, it's hot, you know, then then you just wear shoes. But you will notice over time that when you're barefooted, you can connect to earth even better. All right, and doing it in uh, in a park, in a place where there's greenery in your garden, you actually have more benefits than doing it in your living room. But uh, I'm doing it in my living room because I'm conducting a class. Otherwise, um, my advice typically for people is you do it in the park and if you can, um, stand under a tree shade, <coughs> stand next to a tree to do it because the tree, tree will provide you with shade and the tree has very good energies. So if you do it indoor with fan, that is perfectly fine, which is what I'm doing right now. Okay, so your tongue needs to touch the upper palate. <clears throat> you stand with your knees slightly bent. Okay, um, cold, <clears throat> any kinds of floor is fine. Try to try, if possible, to stand on ground floor as slow as near to the earth as possible. And if you can, it's better to stand on a floor that is not an insulator, right? If you have marble flooring or tile flooring, that would be better than carpeted or parquet wooden, all right? Um, and, but parquet is better than on carpets because most carpets nowadays are made of plastic, all right? So the plastic insulates and the connection in terms of energy is not so good. Okay, now we shall go into feeling your chi, all right? We start with feeling chi so that you know your state of your chi. So your knees are roughly, uh, your knees are slightly bent, your feet are roughly shoulder width apart. And then what you're going to do is you bring your hands together, but without touching, then you pull them apart. Together and pull them apart. So as if you're playing an accordion. Now you all know what an accordion is? Um, we don't see much of real accordions there, but I think we always learn about it in the books, right? So accordion. Okay, so as you do this, if your chi and life force is reasonably strong, you will feel some sensations in your palms. If your chi, you can't feel anything that is perfectly normal for modern day people. All right, and that's because most of us touch, we use a lot of the smartphone and uh, too much of it is no good. I would advise you, okay, for me, I will use a stylus. I get a secondhand note, right? Samsung note, so that I use a stylus. If you can, you get a, a cover such that your hands, fingers don't touch the mobile phone too much. Otherwise, it will affect the chi in your body, all right? It's not too good. Try not to put your phone into your pocket, especially for men, don't put it in your breast pocket, all right? Because the heart has a lot of bio energy all right bioelectric and magnetic energy and the phone will affect your heart okay never do that never put it next to your heart all right so have a good sense of your chi then the next exercise to feel the chi is imagine your hands are in a pool of water all right your hands are in a pool of water and you sweep the chi from one hand to the other all right you sweep the chi from one hand to the other okay so now, uh, for most people, you want to start with your hands closed, all right, and you make sure your fingers point the palm, point at the receiving palm, and you will notice that if your chi is relatively strong, you feel some sensations that follows the path of your fingers on your palms. All right, you can switch hands. Now, this is a, my preferred method of sensing chi because if I want to measure how, whether my chi is getting stronger, I put, pull my arms further apart, and I see whether I can sense the sensations. All right. So you know how strong is your chi. So the idea is right now you want to have an idea how strong is your chi, so that as we do more qigong and unity qigong, you get you can get a confirmation that this qigong is immediately benefiting you. All right. So I bet everyone can, uh, most of you uh, or some of you can feel the sensations, but some can't. That is all right. Okay. Uh, so, 
the first thing that I'm going to share with you is a very important Qigong warm-up exercise that will help you get all the energies to your <clears throat> to, to your body, all right, enhance your qi and life force, right? And this thing actually even uh, enhances your prana. So it's a very important warm-up. So uh, get ready. Let me adjust my camera. So what you need to do is very simple. Okay, again, the reminder, feet roughly shoulder width apart, knees are slightly bent, your tongue touch the upper palate, and we're going to swing our arms by rotating our waist, okay? And you let your arms rotate freely. Now, I want you to feel the rotation of your spine. You notice that your spine will rotate and let your head rotate together with the spine until until your head looks at something behind you until you can see right behind you okay allow your vertebrae right allow the spine to slowly turn and at the end of the movement is your head you all get what i mean just follow the movement don't turn the head by yourself let the spine turn your head all right, just swing, <coughs> relax, and let the spine turn your head. Let your hands be free to your hands to be free to hit your body, kind of hit your body, right? So for me, when I'm doing this warm up, I got quite a number of chicken warm ups and exercises when I practice. So for me, when I do, I do 50 sets left, right is one set. So I will do 50 times, which means I would have swung myself left, right a hundred times. All right, we don't need to do a hundred times, so you can just stop now. <clears throat> it's just to teach you all how to do this. All right, and now that you have done this Qigong warm up, again, you're going to feel your chi. All right, you do the accordion thing. And see whether can you feel a difference in your chi. So, uh, LT Hong is asking, you can feel as this wave is touching the palm. Yes, when you sense the palms, you can feel something. All right, and now you want to see whether your chi has gotten stronger. You do the second method. All right, you sweep. You're sweeping like chi from one hand to the other. And you can pull the hand further apart, right? The chi is very strong. For me, I can put all the way and I can still feel my chi, all right? But for you all, you probably start like this, close, and then you move further apart. This is to help you get a sense that everything you do, done right, done, you know, done right, done properly, will be able to help you. Now, the only thing with this uh, warm up is if you have spinal injury, and you should know yourself, if you have spinal injury, then you can't do this too much, right? Or you need to go real slow. Okay, you have spinal injury, you need to go real slow. If your spinal injury is really bad, then you know you can't do this. All right, this is just common sense. Please be safe. Um, make sure you know your own limits, okay? When you do this exercise, because I'm not there with you in person, I don't know your medical background. So observe common sense when it comes to your own physical safety and what you can or cannot do. But in general, the Qigong that I teach is all very gentle and most people can do. All right? Now, <clears throat> that was the first warm-up. Today, I'm going to teach you the second warm-up. All right? Today is second lesson. We're going to add another important warm-up. Okay? Someone's asking, can a person with slip disc do the swinging exercise? Now, it depends on how bad is the slip disc. Now, if you actually have slip disc and it's not too bad, all you need to do is do it gently. And people find that it will help relieve their slip disc pain. And it will make the slip this stronger because um, if you go and see a physiotherapist or, or those who do body work, they will tell you that if you have slip this, you still need to strengthen your spine ligaments and the tendons, uh, the muscles that support it. You still need to do some exercise. All right. But you do not overdo it. All right. You do not overdo it. Um, someone is asking, can I not turn my head when swing cause you feel headache? Yes, if you feel headache, then uh, you don't turn. But if you want to benefit most, right? The swinging, you will turn your head. You will get the chi to flow very strongly, right? And then you can feel more. <clears throat> so, 
So um, the thing about the tongue on the upper palate is this. If you, your tongue does not touch the upper palate, you will easily get headaches because energy is supposed to flow. Okay, in Qigong, there's something called Xiao Zhou Tian or microcosmic orbit. But by the objective is to get the energy to flow down the front of the body and up the back. So it will flow in a circular manner. All right, it's meant to flow in a circular manner. The more Qigong you do, the stronger the flow will be. Okay, so um, if your tongue does not touch the upper palate, the energy can go up the back to your head, but it cannot go down the front. So energy keep on collecting in your head. Go up, collect in your head, go up, collect in your head, and then you have headache. But other people, they cannot turn their head because they have vertigo. Then you don't turn your head. All right, so you have to see your own physical um, condition. Okay, so we are done with the first uh, warm-up. We're going to go into the second warm-up. The second warm-up I'm going to teach everyone today is what I call the tiger claws, or in general, it's called the tiger claws. So <clears throat> it's very simple. Now um, it goes like this, okay? So if I stand at the side, I'm going to imagine I'm like a tiger. I'm going to claw people, okay? Can you see? I'm going to claw people, claw. Now and we're going to time it with our breath where possible, all right? So we exhale, 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 exhale. All right, let's do it. Exhale, exhale. Exhale. All right. Do you get it? You need to time it with your breath. Every time you are clawing, you need to exhale. Exhale, 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 exhale. All right. Now, why is this warm up important? Okay. Uh, a very important thing in Qigong is the understanding of our energy meridians. Okay. The, the energy pathways that flow in our body. Okay. There are 12 important. Uh, meridians 12 primary meridians and six of them half of them flow to the fingers every finger has a meridian that brings energy to the rest of our body to certain parts of our body to certain organs of the body all right so every finger has so when you are exercising and you're doing a tiger claws the motion plus the breath you need to do it with the breath you are bringing energy you're bringing energy to your fingers and to the rest of your body. Without realizing it, just exercising your fingers will bring chi to the rest of your body. And I bet there are some of you here who have arthritis, right? Or problems with finger pains and cannot bend your fingers. Yes, how many of you have that problem? You can just um, give, uh, give a thumbs up or raise your hands. Okay. So, uh, Ang is asking, when we exhale, does the tongue go down or still at the palate? You're exhaling with your nose. All right, we're not doing anything strenuous, so we should not need to breathe with our mouth. Just try to breathe with your nose. So, you're exhaling with your nose and your tongue is touching the upper palate. All right. So, yeah, so some people are saying their fingers can't bend properly. So, this, you need to bend your fingers. You will notice if your fingers can't bend properly, right? And because the chi doesn't flow, it will result in more pains and problems in other parts of your body. All right. So um, try to do it. Someone asked me, uh, is it good for Raynaud's phenomena? Sorry, I'm not familiar with Raynaud's phenomena. Maybe you can explain. But people with arthritis, right? You need to do this. So. Okay, in general, we try to do, we try to do, okay, like a hundred, but we're not going to do a hundred because this is a short class. We're going to do 50 and we try to do it fast. Okay, we do it in sets of 10. Okay, what we do is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So rapid breath. All right. So we're going to do 50. Okay, starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. All right, you've done 50 and now you feel your chi again. Okay, someone, um, 
Olivia is clarifying Reynolds phenomena. Fingers get cold easily and turn blue. Yes. All right. Any problem with fingers getting cold, getting sweaty? All right. Doing this or doing any qigong plus this tiger claws, it will help with your um, condition. All right. So you do the accordion, sensing qi, and then you do the the cool version. All right, can you all notice that uh, your chi is stronger or your hands are more sensitive? Right, so um, this is very good. The more finger problems, the more arthritic problems you have, the more you should do it. Okay, um, best time to do qigong is during dusk. Dusk means all right when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting so you do it during dawn or dusk uh, i mean during twilight hours twilight means dawn and dusk all right so in the morning for malaysia time it will roughly nowadays be, be around 6 30 is good okay the problem is if i conduct a class during uh, morning 6 30 or 7 a.m most people won't be here right <laughs> and especially for a weekend so can do tiger claws sitting down yes you can do it sitting down um because uh we do a lot of standing up you can do sitting down if you have problems standing okay are we supposed to inhale with the nose and exhale with your mouth while doing this no need okay so uh if you're doing fast and you your breath cannot catch up then you do it with your mouth exhale with your mouth all right you notice that if you do it fast otherwise okay I don't know whether you can listen to me. I'm going to do it fast with my nose and you can hear me breathing. Exhale. Get me? So if you can, always try to breathe with your nose unless you're like swimming or you're jogging, right? Then maybe you need a bit of mouth. But otherwise, your nose is a better, um, is a better organ for breathing. All right? So this is a very important exercise uh warm up and similarly you can do it with your feet all right so you want to do it with your feet so there are 12 important or major meridians six are on your six goes to your hands and six go to your feet and just by doing your hands and feet all right you will be bringing uh, a lot of good things good positive energies to your body and uh, people who do foot massage you know there's reflexology and everything so not just reflexology points on the feet or reflexology points on the palm. It's because the meridians go all the way to the fingers and the toes. So if you're going to do it for your toe, now, um, <clears throat> I think it's very disgusting to show, to, 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 to show my feet, okay? So you don't need, so what you need to do is imagine my hands is the feet, all right? So the feet is roughly this way, right? So what you want to do is you want to go down grip. Okay, grip and you grip your toe starting from the small toe. Small toe, you grip. So you grip, go down, bring back up. Okay, this is your feet. You grip, go down, bring that up. Do you all get what I mean? Grip, go down, bring it up. So with the feet, you can't do as fast as with your hands. All right. But if you want to cover all the chi to go to a different parts of your body, this is the way to do it. Okay. Um, someone asked, is it better to do tiger claw movement fast or slow? I normally do it fast, all right? Because um, some things with slow breath is good. With tiger claws, you want to activate your chi. And the fast breathing will also activate your chi. And you pump, pump, pump. You pump all the chi to go to your hands and fingers. So you try to go fast if you can, all right? Um, eyes closed or eyes open, it doesn't matter, okay? Is it good to practice chicken with some therapy, background music? I prefer not to do with music, all right? Because music will affect your rhythm. Your rhythm should be based on your body and your breath. So don't let the music affect you, okay? So um, I never teach um, anything, including meditation with music because it affects your body and your mind and you don't need that, okay? You don't need that. But if you really is addicted to some music, then no choice, then you try to do it, okay? But otherwise, my advice is try not to do without music or anything. Doing feet, yes, it will be sitting down. So uh, I'm seated right now, okay? 
Um, all right, so I'm seated. So the movement I show you is like this, all right, like this. So with your legs, so your legs will be on the ground. Okay, it's really hard to see. So your legs are on the ground and you go down. Let me all see. Then you want to go down and up, go down and up. All right. So just like with the hands, it's, uh, it's obviously the, the feet is not as nimble as the hands. And most people don't do much of it. So you let your heels rest on the ground. All right, your heels. You know where your heels, the bottom of your feet, rest it on the ground. Okay, when you're rested, then you go, okay? Go, grip, grip. So when, you, when you're resting, your heels are on the ground. When you're gripping, your whole feet will have to lift off the floor. So just grip and grip. Sorry, uh, the camera is not um, done. So basically, when you start out, your feet is on the ground. Then when you start, you lift your legs up and grip, 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 grip. All right, so um, we are trying to just do the feet right now, okay? The feet takes a lot of practice because most people do not do gripping with our toes, yes? And uh, this is part of the reason why we also have health problems linked to um, linked to our feet, like gallbladder problems, all right? Gallbladder problems. So if you have gallbladder problem, even if you have lost your gallbladder, right, the, the energy still flows. But because if you have lost your gallbladder, the energy doesn't flow properly, this exercise will also help. All right? So your feet is doing this, doing this, this and up, this and up. So you will also exercise your calf muscles. And yes, you try to do with the breath. Okay, as you grip, exhale. As you grip, exhale. As you grip, exhale. When you exhale, you're sending chi to the to the toes. All right. So you just do a couple. You breathe out when your toes are gripping. Same thing with your hands. So if you're good already, now you add the hands. So you do slowly. Okay, so you can do with your hands and feet. Exhale, exhale, exhale. If your hands and feet easily get numb, yes, that means the blood circulation, the energy, the chi circulation is weak. This is what you need to do. All right. Um, I don't know whether it's possible to show my feet. Let me... Let me put my um, laptop down, okay? So, you exhale, grip, up, exhale, grip, up, exhale, grip, up, exhale, grip, up, exhale, grip, up. So, you want your little toe to go in first, go, 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 grip, go down, right? And then, you pull up. And then you go down, pull up. Exhale, go down, pull up. All right. So the pull up part is important because it will exercise your calf and it will pump blood and chi and lymph, a lot of things that your body need to do. Someone said toes can't move. Yes, that is the problem. Most of us don't exercise our toes. And that is why a lot of health problems. Okay, so I try to do it um you try to do it together all right try to do both feet together heel don't need to touch the floor unless you are resting right um those of you who, if you're actually doing because most of us don't raise our feet you're going to find that uh, this thing wow you know oh, my my feet is so heavy right so you do like sets of 10 and then you rest on the floor <sighs> take a couple of breaths <sighs> uh, you know deep breath with your mouth if you necessary and then go back and do another 10. So this part, a lot of people don't do, or right? people don't exercise our toes and our feet much. So uh, if you're lazy to do that, go and get a uh, good, uh, you know, foot massage, feet massage, or reflexology, get it done, okay? So after you do it, okay, we're gonna go back to feeling our cheek. 
right? We're going to go back to filling our chi. Um, okay, if you're, if you're seated already, you can do, you can still continue seated, lah, okay? Um, seated. <laughs> so you're seated already, you can just continue seated and then you feel your chi, you're seated, but let your feet touch the ground, all right? Let your feet touch the ground, okay? Um, if you want to be more, you know, some people are very scientific. They want to compare apple to apple, then you stand up because now it's apple to orange. Now you're sitting down, so the energy might be slightly different. All right. So for me, for me, I don't need to bring my palms very close because I do like this. I can feel already, but for you all, you need to bring close and pull it apart. All right. And then you do the sweeping and you can change hands. Someone says, um, I feel my stomach digesting burp. Yes, because when you activate the chi, the chi will start flowing in your body. Everything in your body gets activated when you do your fingers and your toes. All right. So um, if you are doing with shoes, then you can't do it. All right. You wear shoes, you can't do it. And uh, breathing method is the same whether it's for fingers or for your toes. All right. Um, uh, someone asked, LT Hong asked, can sit on the old to do fit claw? I don't know on sit on the old. What are you referring to? Okay. Not easy to time with the breathing. Everything is not easy at the start. Please try to, um, uh, adjust. Okay. Not too easy to sit on the floor to do fit claw. No, uh, I'm sitting on a chair. All right. Sit on a chair to do. It will be easier. All right. Sit on a chair to do. It will be easier. All right. So we are done with the, um, this is the second important warm up in Qigong that uh, we teach. So can you all feel that uh, for some of you, your Qi is flowing, your body is getting warmer. Okay. And now we're going to go into Unity Qigong already. All right. We're going to recap the first stage that we taught in last lesson was the movements of Unity Qigong. So I will just do a brief one. I shall, because most of you have attended the class. All right. And we can do this seated or standing, right? Seated and standing is pretty much the same. So we will just start with left hand. So um, when we start with left hand, we try to put it, okay, um, there's a place where we start, we try to put it somewhere below the belly button, okay? Below the belly button is our energy center called Tan Tian, all right? It's a Qi energy center. It's a good place to put your palm. Um, and you want your palm face down all right you want your palm to face down all right left hand if you want to start with right hand it's up to you um normally after we do with left hand we do the second half of the set with right hand so if you prefer the right hand and left hand is also okay i i tend to prefer left to right like you know when we write we write from left to right okay left hand in front of tan tian palms down we inhale as we exhale, right hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above the left hand and then we inhale and exhale. We flip both palms, palms face inwards and then we inhale. As we exhale, our hands move to the sides, palms face up, and then we inhale and exhale. We flip both palms, palms face down, we inhale and exhale. We lower our hands onto our thighs, palms face down, and then we inhale and exhale. Right hand in front of the Tan Tian below the belly button, palm down, we inhale. As we exhale, left hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above. The right hand and we inhale and exhale. Flip both palms, palms face inwards, we inhale and exhale 
As we exhale, our hands move to the sides, palm face up, and then we inhale and exhale. Flip both palms, palm face downwards, we inhale and exhale. We lower our hands onto our thighs, palms touching the thighs. We inhale and exhale. All right, and I'm going to show one set doing while standing. It's practically the same. Okay. So I'm just going to remind everyone where with Unity Qigong, we are actually drawing a circle in front. All right, if you see the movements, you look at me, I'm drawing a circle that is in front of me. Can you see the movements are all circular? All right, when I'm facing you, you see the circle here. Okay, when I stand sideways, the circle is here. All right, and this is important because you're drawing the circle in front here. Okay. You want to make sure the circle is in the same plane in front of you. Okay, a lot of people make a minor mistake, a minor mistake, okay? Which is what they do is when one hand is below and one hand is above, okay? The, this is supposed to be the right way. The hand is above the other hand, okay? But for a lot of people, they do not look at the mirror, they end up doing this. The hand is above the head. This is the common tendency. All right, you look at yourself in the mirror, you look at yourself when you do the tendency to put your hand above the head, this will affect the energy slightly. It won't, it will affect the energy to be not so good. Or some people, okay, their hands is a bit in front. So you want to do it one above the other. Then the circle energy will be very, will be better and will be, will be more powerful, more effective for you. Um, if you do have some hand injury or some kind of injury that you cannot do properly, then that is fine. Okay, you can't help it. Uh, over time, if you can, try to do it one hand above the other. Alright, so we're going to do standing up. So the, the movements are the same, except at the end, you don't need to rest your palms on top of your thighs. You just relax your hands, whether it touches your thighs or not, it does not matter. We we'll start with left hand in front of the Tan Tian. We inhale. As we exhale, right hand, trace the half circle upwards until it's above the left hand and then we inhale and exhale flip both palms and then we inhale as we exhale hands move to the sides palms face up and then we inhale and exhale we flip both palms, palms face downwards, we inhale and exhale. We just lower our hands, relax, and then we inhale and exhale. Right hand in front of Tan Tian, below belly button, we inhale. As we exhale, left hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above the right hand and we inhale and exhale. Take both palms, palms face inwards, we inhale and exhale. As we exhale, hands move to the sides, palms face up. And then we inhale and exhale. Flip both palms, palms face downwards. We inhale and exhale. We lower our hands, just relax. And then we inhale and exhale. All right, can you all feel that when you're doing this unity qigong movements, um, sensations on your hands or maybe in your body even? All right, those who can feel, you can raise your hands or give a thumbs up or um, just put a one on the, on the chat. 
Now, someone is asking, is it diaphragm breathing? Uh, if you can do diaphragm breathing, in Qigong, we don't call it diaphragm breathing, we call it Tan Tian breathing. We want to breathe all the way to the Tan Tian. But that is actually another thing, all right? Um, it's not so important. Okay, uh, there are a lot of things to learn in Qigong. I'm just going to focus on teaching Unity Qigong and the relevant Qigongs that supports it, okay? All right, so this is a recap of last lesson. We're going to move forward with this with the addition today and uh, everyone can please sit down okay we can do seated so seated and standing is pretty pretty much the same okay now in chico there is this uh thank you everyone for the feedback looks like everyone uh, could feel the energies of unity chico um chris is asking i know if doing chico kids keep interrupting will it change my chi uh, of course, uh, it's best to do without interruption, okay? So, uh, uh, try to do it without interruption. The thing is, it's quite safe. You won't end up, uh, you know, like some people call Zhou Huo Ru Mo, you know, uh, get into energy problems. It's not that bad, okay? You need Qi Gong, it's quite safe. Don't worry about it. Okay, now, this is the important part of today's lesson. This is what is new for Unity Qigong. We learned the warm-ups, the new warm-up, which is the tiger claws, right? Okay, with four hands and the feet. Now, when it comes to Unity Qigong, this, this movement, we need to understand something about Qigong, which is Qigong believes in using the mind. Okay, unlike other forms of exercises, Qigong believes in the mind and um, there is a saying in Chinese for Qigong, Yi Tao Qi Tao. Okay, those of you who know Chinese, Yi Tao Qi Tao, Yi Nian the Yi. So it means where intent, where intent goes, your Qi will follow. Okay, where intent goes, energy will follow. All right. So, um, we're going to do that. We're going to teach you the mental component of the Unity Chico. Okay, so the movements are the same. What you need to do is add in the mental component. All right. So, again, we start with left hand. Left hand in front of the Tan Tian. When you inhale, you are telling yourself to inhale pure energies of the earth. All right, pure or positive energies of the earth, you inhale. As you exhale, right hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above the left hand. And then you inhale the pure energies of heaven, sky, universe. And then you inhale. And exhale. Okay, good. Pause. Relax for a while. I need to explain here. Now, Qigong is a Chinese ancient uh, like uh, exercise or energy art. All right, Qigong. Qi means energy. Gong means art. It's energy art. Um, and this name is more, it's kind of modern name. They used to have a different name for it. But now, in Qigong or in Chinese, ancient Chinese, they believe in three levels of existence. Okay. And in Chinese terms is called Tian Ren Di. All right, Tian Ren Di. If you know Chinese, now Tian is referring to heaven or the sky or the universe. Now, if you think about Tian for the old, you know, oh, our old ancestors, uh, I'm Chinese, okay, well, the people in China in ancient times, when they talk about the word Tian, to them Tian can be the sky, it can because they will see the sun, they will see the clouds, right, during the day in the sky, the blue sky. At night, they see the moon and the stars. And to them, that is the sky, it is also Tian. Okay, but to us, at night, the stars we know now, the stars are in the universe. Yes, we know the stars are in the universe, and universe is not the same as, as the sky, um, or the blue sky, or the atmosphere, right, the atmosphere of the earth. And of course, there is a spiritual concept of heaven okay so in those ancient times most people believe the gods are living up there in the clouds in the sky yes okay and um, 
that is probably not true <laughs> okay uh now that we take planes and everything we don't see gods or palaces or anything in the clouds so heaven is more a spiritual or invisible energy or dimensional thing okay but to the ancient people the sky is referring to both the spiritual heaven the the sky the blue sky and the night sky okay which is the universe to us so at this juncture okay at this point when our hand one hand is the palm is facing upwards and we try to inhale the energies in chinese is we are taking in positive energies of tian the chinese word tian which the translation to english would be heaven sky universe all right that is why i use the term heaven sky universe if you're chinese and you know the word tian okay just one word tian will do okay but i'm conducting this class in english so i'm using three words to replace one chinese word okay so at this point okay when your hands just you exhale you reach up and then you inhale pure energies of heaven sky universe and then you exhale then you flip both palms palms face inwards all right now i want you to look at both my arms okay you look at both my arms and then you look at the whiteboard All right, I believe most of you will recognize this uh, drawing or this symbol It's called the Tao symbol or the yin yang symbol. All right, it is a symbol um, that represents balance and harmony. All right, and if you look at the center line, this S like thing. All right, and you look at my hands. Can you see that it's similar? So when your hands are like this, I want you to imagine that your hands are forming this Tao symbol. And this Tao symbol represents balance and harmony. All right. And then you inhale the pure energies, pure positive energies of this symbol into your body. All right. You inhale. And as you exhale, both your hands move to the sides, palms face up. Okay, palms face up. Now, when your palms are up, okay, we introduce another concept in Qigong. Now, in Qigong, we don't believe breathing is just about taking in air through our nose or mouth into our lungs. In Qigong or energy practices like Qigong, we believe that our body is capable of taking in energies directly from the environment. And we use our mind to imagine it okay to imagine to visualize it and believe in it okay if you don't believe in it um try to imagine and visualize and you can feel the effects all right so over here when we are, our palms are up you want to inhale and bring in positive and pure energies into each and every cell c-e-l-l -L, in your body all right now, every cell in your body includes your hair, your nails, fingernails, toenails, your bones, your blood, your muscles, your ligaments, your internal organs, right? When over here, when you inhale, you imagine all the energy is coming into your body, right? Go right in and then you exhale. All right. So over here. When your palms are up, you inhale pure energies into each and every cell. Inhale. And exhale. And then you flip both palms, palms face downwards. And then over here, when you inhale, you imagine your energy or your aura. Okay, your energy or your aura. Now your palms stay here. Okay, the palms actually stay here. I'm trying to illustrate with my hands. Over here, when you inhale, you imagine your aura expand like the universe. All right, you want your energy to expand. You're practicing expanding your energy as big as the universe. So for those of you uh, who are into physics, you will know that our universe is still expanding to this day. So uh, to the physicists, they think that our universe will expand until it cannot expand anymore. And then it will contract and disappear. Well, it started from Big Bang, Big Bang Bang. 
and then it expands and then it will contract. All right, but that is a long, long time. We are still expanding. Okay, we're not contracting. So don't worry about end of the universe. Okay, so over here, our palms are down. We inhale and let our energies expand like the universe. And as we exhale, let our energies return to normal. And then we lower our hands onto our thighs, palms down on our thighs. Now this is the last part. So the last part, uh, it's very important that we harmonize and bring together all the energies into our body. I said at the beginning of this lesson, Unity Qigong improves our life force, our chi and our prana. It helps us release negative energies. So some of you, when you exhale, you feel some stuff leaving your hands, leaving your body even. And we are, with this second lesson, we're using intention to realize what is happening, right? Over here, we bring in pure energies of the earth. Over here, we inhale pure energies of heaven, sky, universe. Over here, we are bringing in the harmonization energies of the Tao. Right? Over here, we bring in pure energies into each and every cell. Over here, we are like the universe. We're bringing universe energies and we're expanding and growing our energies like the universe. So we brought in a lot of energies in the body. Now, so they are trying to mix in the body. So at the end, we want to help it to mix. So we put our palms down and we inhale. We tell ourselves to harmonize and let all the energies become as one. Do you understand what I mean? You want all the energies inside to harmonize and become as one. But it's no, it's no point you do a lot of energy, you take this energy, take that energy, and then it's like cooking, you know, you know, you're cooking and then the ingredients don't quite match and then you mix them up and then it's going to taste yucky, right? You want the ingredients or all these different energies to harmonize together as one in your body for your body to benefit, all right? So uh, we just did half a set. We're going to continue with the second half of the set. Follow me. Now we do it right hand. Right hand in front of Tan Tian. We inhale pure energies of the earth. As we exhale, left hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above the right hand. And we inhale pure energies of heaven, sky, universe. And exhale. Flip both palms, we form the Tao symbol, and then we inhale the harmonization, the harmony and balance energies into us. As we exhale, hands move to the sides, palms face up, and then we inhale pure energies into each and every cell, and exhale. Flip both palms, palms face downwards. We inhale and let our energies expand like the universe. And exhale. We lower our hands onto our thighs, just relax, palms down. We inhale and harmonize as one. And exhale. We'll just do one more set, left hand in front of Tan Tian, palm down, we inhale and bring in pure energies of the earth. As we exhale, right hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above the left hand and we inhale pure energies of heaven, sky, universe. And exhale. Flip both palms, palms face inwards, form the Tao symbol, and we inhale the Tao symbol representing harmony and balance. As we exhale, hands move to the sides, palms face up, and we inhale pure energies into each and every cell. And exhale. Flip both palms, palms face downwards. We inhale and let our energies expand like the universe. And exhale and let our energies return to normal. 
Lower our hands onto our thighs, palms down. We inhale and harmonize as one. And exhale. Right hand in front of Tan Tian. We inhale pure energies of the earth. As we exhale, left hand trace a half circle upwards until it's above the right hand. And we inhale pure energies of heaven, sky, universe. And exhale. Flip both palms, palms face inwards, form the Tao symbol. And we inhale the Tao symbol representing harmony and balance. As we exhale, hands move to the sides, palms face up. And then we inhale pure energies into each and every cell. And exhale. Flip both palms, palms face downwards. And we inhale. As we inhale, our energies expand like the universe. As we exhale, let our energies return to normal. Lower our hands onto our thighs, palms down. We inhale and then harmonize as one. And exhale. All right. Did you notice that with the mental component or the intentions, your energies are stronger? If you did, you can give a thumbs up or raise hand or put a one. I'm just going to finish up with some of your questions. Will it be good to have a break in between to drink some warm water? Um, if you are thirsty, by all means, how often should we be doing this daily? Yes, try to do it daily. If you can, all right, twice a day, once in the morning, once at the night. So you do it in the morning so that you're charged up with good energies, positive energies to face the day, right? God knows, uh, you know, when we go and face the day, we face clients, we face people and we, a lot of negativity. And we do it at night so that you can have a good night's sleep. Okay. So thank you for joining me. Um, I don't know, uh, is time's up or do we have time for questions? Uh, yes, we can still have some time for questions. All right, anyone have questions, feel free to ask. PSE is asking, do we close our eyes when breathing in and out? Um, you will notice that as you do Unity Qigong, your brain waves will slow down and you feel like closing your eyes. That's perfectly natural. Some of you might even notice that I do close my eyes because it's very natural, okay? And you will feel sleepy. That's because your brain waves slow down. So if you're into meditation, doing meditation after Unity Qigong is the best because you will enter meditative states much easier. Can do in the afternoon, yes. Any time is better than no time. The best time is during dawn and dusk, sunrise and sunset. Is there any way you can continue this online class? Yes, um, Signature Market will be posting uh, uh, links. I, I conduct free or donation online classes every month, practically every weekend. Okay, um, meditation, qigong, and uh, sometimes I give spiritual talks. So you can also feel your chi, okay? Those of you, you can feel your chi, verify that your chi has gotten stronger after some practice. The intent, adding the second stage, the intention, the mental component actually makes it more powerful. Does the tongue still up throughout? Yes, okay? Um, Quan says, I feel the chi on and off. Yes, your chi will go on and off until it's stabilized and then you keep flowing. LT Hong is asking, how long do we do it? I recommend minimum three sets. All right, left, right is one set, minimum three sets, once in the morning, once at the night. Okay, so uh, Aries, send the link, sign up for community causes. And uh, those of you who want to support, I think they will be sharing the link, okay, um, and our QR code and how to donate to us. Uh, you'd be very much appreciated if you would like to make a donation, if you feel that you've benefited. If you can't afford it, that is also fine. Um, you want to find us, Okay, uh, we are on Facebook. You can look, search for CordyCat. Um, we have our YouTube channel. Okay, um, right, you'll be able to find us. All right, I will post the link. So if you guys would like to, oh yeah, Yuki have already posted the link. So if you guys are interested to know more about uh, any Qigong course and meditation uh, lesson, yeah, you guys can approach uh, CordyCat at any of these platforms. All right. 
All right, thank you. I um, someone is saying why is my chi stronger on the left hand? That is because uh, you probably uh, either you are left handed or your body not balanced or you have some blockages on your right side and you may have uh, problems on your right uh, right side, your hands, your back, your legs or your organs. Okay, so uh, you can join the groups and uh, you might even you can also find my contacts there. You need to contact me personally to for more questions. I will always reply whenever I'm free. Okay, sometimes I'm not free, but otherwise usually um, I will reply. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good day. I hope to see you next Saturday for the third and final class of the Unity Qigong series on Signature Market. Okay, thank you and have a good day. Yeah, all right, before we go, can we take a group photo? Oh yeah, okay, good. Let's take a group photo. Okay, let me stop share. Okay, all right. Yeah, everyone, let's switch on your cam and we'll take a photo. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. I know it's like early in the morning and it's the weekend, but yeah, I can see that like there's like hundred, like almost hundred of you still, you know, still take the time to join us. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, I hope you guys really benefited from this Qigong course. And yeah, thank you a lot, uh, Kat, yeah, for having this session with us. And yeah. Okay, let's take group photo. Everyone ready? Yeah, okay. So later I will do a count of three and then you guys can uh, do your post. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay, we'll do two more. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to the second page. All right, three, two, one. Okay, last one. Three, two, one. All right, thank you so much, guys. And thank if you guys want you. to join the third session uh, on next week, you guys can um, just sign up from the link that I pasted before. Yeah, so yeah, I hope to see you guys again next week. Bye-bye, have a nice weekend.